You're walking around downtown among the beautiful historic buildings. Each of them is unique with different colors and ornaments. You then turn a corner and... oh. It's one of those newly built areas, full of sterile, nondescript boxes. Gone is the charm, the atmosphere, and the character of the lively, historic downtown. It's all a sterilized, cultural dead zone. You press on and eventually reach the office area, which is even worse. Even the meager individual characteristics of those new residential blocks are gone. It's all just a bunch of glass cubes. How depressing. That's it, I can't take this anymore. I need to go to the store to get myself a… oh god, wait a sec. You know those old, beautiful market halls people used to shop in? Well, but now it's all big metal boxes. What is going on here? Why do all new buildings look so bland and depressing compared to the old ones? How come we don't build quote unquote beautiful buildings anymore? Let's find out. The story begins in the late 19th, early 20th century. Architectural styles like neoclassical were still widespread in the developed world, but a new movement was emerging. Modernism hit the architectural scene. Its main tenets are minimalism, the rejection of ornament, and the idea that form should follow function. Ah, so that's why we don't build nice buildings anymore. Those stupid, talentless progressives back then came up with their stupid, soulless architectural style and forced it upon the world, so now all new buildings are ugly. Right? No. It's a decent plot for a Disney movie, but reality is a bit more complex, I'm afraid. See, modernism came about in an era of technological revolution. New and innovative building materials like glass and steel and reinforced concrete enabled buildings never before seen or even thought possible. Examples of modernist architecture include the Sydney Opera House, the Empire State Building, and this little-known landmark called the Eiffel Tower. A big part of the reason why modernism got so popular is that after so many years of dominance by the old, people were simply ready for something new. Instead of stuffy, stuck-up, over-decorated buildings, we had Falling Water, Villa Tugendhat, Palais de Chaillot, the Rockefeller Center, and a whole lot more fresh and modern buildings. You wouldn't unironically put on this 17th century outfit for your job interview, would you now? You will go for a relatively minimalistic yet elegant suit or a dress because, well, because 17th century garbs just aren't a thing nowadays. The idea is the same with building ornamentation, changing tastes throughout the times. However, there are some additional, far more interesting reasons. And before we get into those, I'd like to thank Athletic Greens for spot. I'd like to thank Athletic Greens for sponsoring today's video and sending me a full package of AG1 to try. AG1 is a whole food dietary supplement for daily use containing 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients to help cover your body's daily needs. It's gluten and dairy free, low calorie, and vegan. AG1 is unique, as currently there is hardly a more comprehensive supplement on the market, and it's made with the highest quality ingredients. It's easy to mix, has a mild, pleasant taste, and a nice texture. If you made a New Year's resolution of, say, getting in shape or getting healthier, AG1 will help you achieve your goals. It's February still, so hey, you're not too late. AG1 supports your immune system, maintains your energy level, and boosts your body's natural recovery process. Personally, ever since I started drinking AG1 in the morning, I found that I no longer need coffee to start my day, and I feel generally more alert and clearer in the head. All in all, I'm satisfied with AG1 and can genuinely recommend it to my viewers. Get yourself a pack of AG1 using the link in the description and enjoy its benefits to your mind and body now. Thank you for checking out AG1 by Athletic Greens. Ads like this support me in creating more content for you. And now, back to the video. So as we discussed, a reason why buildings nowadays have less ornaments is changing tastes throughout the times. Now this is all well and good, but it doesn't explain, say, Soviet apartment blocks or similar large-scale public housing. Virtually nobody finds these buildings good looking or interesting, so there must be something else in the background other than changing tastes. There is an idea in far-right conspiracy circles that actually modern architecture is a plot by the shadowy elites to crush the spirit of white civilization so they can import non-whites into developed countries to dilute the culture and the white gene pool because of… reasons. And this might be an interesting plot for a South Park episode, but as usual, reality is a bit more complicated. Do comic blocks and similar large-scale public housing projects look sometimes bland or uninspiring? Sure. But they weren't built as a form of architectural expression. They were simply not made to look beautiful. In Europe, following World War II, there was a massive housing crisis basically everywhere, so states set up massive public housing programs. In the Soviet sphere of influence, this was done via so-called house factories, where they mass-produced standardized elements that workers could put together on site, thus massive amounts of housing could be built at a low cost relatively quickly. And it worked. 
Comic blocks essentially solved the housing crisis, and for a time anyway, they also represented a civilizational shift for their new inhabitants who often moved in from buildings without electricity or indoor plumbing. If you want to know more about comic blocks, I have a whole video about them, feel free to check it out. So next time you hear someone say that public housing apartment blocks are a communist plot to crush the human spirit or something, well, being homeless or not having access to running water are perhaps bigger threats to the human spirit, who knows. Also, imagine if some local government spent its public housing money on ornamentation instead of building as many units as possible. Hello citizens, we only built 7 blocks out of 10 due to higher ornament costs, so hundreds of you will not have a roof over your heads, but hey, look how beautiful these 7 blocks are. Now you'll have something nice to look at from under the bridge. So there's our second reason why we don't always build nice buildings housing shortages. But this still doesn't explain this latest onslaught of same-looking buildings in the US and Europe. Such buildings are absolutely everywhere and spreading. They're bland and boring, uninspired, depressing and so on. Though to be fair, the US is more affected by this than Europe. So why do developers keep spamming these buildings? It's not like they're part of a massive, standardized public housing project. We're living under neoliberal capitalism, which happens to be the reason why those buildings look the way they look. You see, from the late 20th century onward, housing was increasingly looked at not as spaces to live, but its commodities to be bought and sold. This culminated in the 2000s housing bubble and the consequent 2008 economic crisis. People simply stopped planning for durability, quality and proper aesthetics. Just get the cheapest materials you can, put up a building that looks reasonably nice and sell it at inflated prices. Due to their low quality construction, the buildings would start falling apart in a few years, but it doesn't matter, since by then you'll have already made your money and the building would be on its seventh owner who is looking to sell it at an even higher price. Housing went from places to live to a speculation scheme a hot potato match among investors, but when the music stopped, everyone went bankrupt. Aside from outright speculation, there is also the good old-fashioned profit motive. Let's take a developer who wants to put up a new building to rent or sell the units. Suppose we present them with architectural templates. Neoclassical, Art Deco, Baroque Revival and the average 5 over 1. 10 times out of 10 they'll pick the 5 over 1 and ignore the rest. Why? Because it's the cheapest, ergo they'll make the most money with it. Turns out 5 over 1s are built using standardized materials that can be mass produced, keeping costs down. Even if the quality is questionable, well, it only needs to hold together till the end of the warranty period, then it's the new owner's problem. Or in case of renting, developers can just keep blaming the tenants for defects and deduct repairs from their deposits. A developer could spend a boatload of money on a durable, brick neoclassical apartment building with tons of ornamentation, but that won't affect the rent or unit price all that much, since the three most important aspects of real estate are location, location and location. If you are a developer building units in a desirable location, as long as the units are mostly habitable, that's all you need really, you'll have made your money. The story is the same with office buildings and large shopping centers. As we do not mass produce classical ornaments, they would need to be custom made for each building at prohibitive costs. But how come companies don't want to build something representative still? Why aren't, say, Walmarts built nice, like those old market halls? With that, we arrive at the fourth factor. And what would that be? Recently, the beautiful Art Nouveau facade of Prague main station was renovated. The station regained its former splendor, but almost nobody noticed, because no one is there to see it, because there is an urban freeway and an elevated parking lot right in front of it. If you want to experience the facade's architectural beauty, you have to crawl through dark, piss-smelling underpasses and grimy, rusted spiral stairs and stand in the middle of a concrete parking lot next to an urban freeway. Hardly a conducive environment for savoring the arts. Car-centered areas actively sabotage architectural beauty. Why would anyone bother building building something good looking or waste money on ornamentation when no one will be around to appreciate it. Even if you build a good looking Walmart that isn't just a big metal box, who cares? People will just park their cars, scurry inside, do their shopping and then drive away. Nobody stays around to stroll, to talk, to hang out, to take in the beauty around them. What good is a beautiful building when your city is built for cars? Cars don't appreciate architectural beauty, people do. But for that, they have to be around. And if roads in your city look like this, and sound like this, Nobody will stick around, in which case why even bother building anything nice? Aside from urban motor traffic, parking minimums are also to blame here. Those old, atmospheric, human-centric beautiful areas would be illegal to build today due to parking requirements. The current laws in much of the world actually prescribe car-infested cities and force developers to build a ton of parking for new buildings, which then induces even more car traffic and drives up construction costs. Thus areas become congested, thus there will be less people hanging around, and suddenly you don't need to build anything good-looking anymore. People will be looking at the road in front of them, not at the buildings. And even if a developer wanted to pay for ornamentation despite everything, well, unfortunately the underground garage they were forced to build due to parking minimums ate all their ornament money. But hey, at least Karen can comfortably park her Resvani Vengeance SUV equipped with a bulletproof glass, explosive underbody shield, electrified door handles, built-in pepper spray and a loudspeaker. Hey, 
So to answer the question of why we don't build quote-unquote beautiful buildings anymore, and by that people colloquially mean ornamented pre-modern buildings, the reasons we've pinpointed are as follows. Tastes changing with the times, sheer necessity to house people, housing becoming a commodity instead of places to live, and car-centric urban planning. So next time you see a new quote-unquote ugly building, you'll know why it's there. No conspiracy, just tastes, necessity, capitalism or cars. And this is not to say we stopped building nice things. Beauty can come from places other than ornament. Take the three biggest stations in Budapest, Kelati, Nugati and Daly. Kelati and Nugati are beautiful, but so is Daly, just in a different way. And personally, Daly is my favorite of them all. Anyway, there was my excuse to talk about rail. Thank you for watching. If you appreciate my content, consider supporting me on Patreon so I can make more content like this. And I'll be seeing you next time.